Okay, welcome to the first of the simple harmonic motion experiments, which is the mass and spring system. So as you can see here, the apparatus that we have is we have uh, one of our uh, mechanics frames. On the top here, we have a bracket that is suspending our spring that we're going to look at here. And here we have a hanger that allows us to place these masses on there so we can basically increase the force that's acting on the spring. So for the first part of the experiment, what we want to do is add various weights uh, onto the spring here, see how far that extends, and that allows us to calculate what the spring constant is going to be uh, for this particular system. So in order to do that, I can measure the extension using this. I've got a magnetic ruler that I can place anywhere here on the frame. So I have to think about how it is that I'm actually going to measure where the, uh, the spring is extending. So I need to choose the best point to make this kind of measurement. Uh, because any errors in this measurement are going to affect the accuracy of my spring constant value. So what I'm going to do here is actually uh, I'm going to decide maybe to use the bottom of this hanger here because we have a nice sort of flat edge that we can maybe use to, to line up with the, uh, with the spring uh, more easily. But you can see that even so, because the, the spring, uh, the hanger is actually um, is probably about 10 centimetres away from where this ruler is behind, that means if I look from above, uh, or below, then I'm going to get a slight inaccuracy in my measurement, which is going to cause an error in my, uh, in my experiment. So what I'm probably going to do here is actually I, I'd see if I can just reconfigure the frame slightly. So by rotating this in this direction, I can get that to hang much closer to the frame, which is going to improve my accuracy. So then I can take my ruler uh, and I'm just going to line it up um, with the edge of these holes here just to make sure it's acting perfectly in the vertical direction because once again if the ruler is, is at an angle here then that's going to affect the quality of my measurement. So I'm going to set it up uh, like that. Uh, I'm also, I'm just looking ahead here and thinking well um, if this hanger is going to extend down here and I need to make sure I've got plenty of ruler uh, acting below this so I'm going to mount this ruler right at the bottom of this frame here and then I can read along my measurements by, by sighting along that uh, to look along the line there. So for my first measurement, uh, basically the load on here is just 10 grams, which is basically just the weight of this plastic hanger that's going to hold, hold all the weights there. So I'm going to take what's called a scale reading, which I'm just going to read off directly uh, what the value is on this ruler, and I'm going to do that in millimetres. So if I look along there, let's try and stop that from oscillating a little bit. Okay, so I can record a value of uh, 136 millimetres. So that's going to be my first, first measurement on there. So now I need to put the hanger and weight up to 50 grams. So I'm going to add four of these 10 gram masses onto here. So we get one, two, three, Four. Okay, and then I'm going to record another reading, and that's looking at about 126 millimeters. So I'm going to write that there. So basically, these are just readings off the ruler. I can then calculate an extension, which is basically just the difference uh, between these two values. So it's basically how how far it's extended for this given uh, application of the, of the mass. Uh, I'm going to fill that in the, in the column here uh, in metres. So that's uh, basically a change of 10 millimetres in this case, which is going to be an extension of 1 centimetre or 0.01 metres. Right, so then I just keep going. Add another five of these 10 gram masses. Total of 100 grams, and the reading is 114 millimeters. I can calculate all the extensions after the fact. I'm just going to get the scale readings now. So another five, one, two, three, four, five. And 
now I'm at about 103 millimeters. Five again. One, two, three, four, five. It's about 91 millimeters. Number five. 79 millimeters. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using the flat edge to kind of sight along and take a reading from the scale. Uh, other things you could do if you have something with a square edge, like a set square, you could place that against the frame and that would give you a perfectly horizontal measurement on there, which could give you uh, more accurate data. Okay, so now we're at 300 grams in total. Now the extension is 66. Sorry, the scale reading is 66. Another five. So it's about 400 grams. Scale reading is 43. Thirty one. The last five takes us up to 500 grams. And we got 19 as our scale reading. So that's basically uh, all we need to do to be able to calculate the, uh, the spring constant for this spring. Basically, we can plot a graph using the data that I've recorded here that I'll provide to you uh, as an as a example data set. And we can use, look at the, the gradient of the, of the points on that graph, and that allows us to calculate what the spring constant is going to be. And now we can move on to the next part of the experiment. So, the next part of the experiment um, is to actually calculate what the um, period is going to be for this oscillating mass. So basically we're going to oscillate this, mouse up, uh, this mass up and down vertically um, uh, in a simple harmonic motion regime. And we're going to basically use a stopwatch to time what the period is for the system. And then we can use our knowledge of the spring constant that we calculated from this first experiment and the mass on here 
to calculate what the theoretical period should be. So we can compare and contrast those two, those two solutions for each of the matters we have here and see how close our measured value was to what we'd expect to get from this system. So because I'm going to um, move this, uh, allow this to oscillate up and down, I need to move it a little bit away from the frame. So uh, I've finished the, the previous experiment. Uh, I don't need this ruler anymore, so I'm just going to rotate this bracket at the top to move it out from the frame. So previously it was really close, now we've moved it about 10 degrees away from the frame. Sorry, 10 centimetres away from the frame. And that is going to give, make it less likely to actually um, to strike the frame as it oscillates up and down. So I'm just going to draw it down like this, release it, and then tie in the oscillations as it moves up and down like this. So, um, the first... Um, Recording on my graph here is basically for the mass of 500 grams, which is what's on there from the, from the previous experiment. And I'm going to calculate the time for a number of oscillations. Now, in the sheet here, it's recommending I do 50 oscillations. But with practice, as you can see now, it starts to go unstable. And this happens, uh, is much more prevalent for the, for the small masses as well. So as I get down to lower and lower masses, it's going to become unstable more quickly. So I'm going to reduce this down to 20 oscillations, or in some cases, maybe even 10. Uh, then, but then I just have to divide by the right number to get the, the, the correct period for this column here. So let's see how we go with the first one. So we'll do um, 20 oscillations. Uh, just remember that an oscillation is from where it goes to the same position again. So it's going down, up and down again. That is one full oscillation. It has to complete that, that, that full motion. Um, for this experiment, there's only me to actually record uh, the values here. Uh, so... Uh, so basically it, what you might find in your groups is there's an opportunity to actually work as teams so you can basically uh, have a number of different people making these measurements uh, and, uh, and then you can take the average or the mean value and that will probably give you a more accurate, uh, a more accurate measurement for, for the oscillations. So uh, let's just reset this and oh, I'm just going to stopwatch mode. Actually, I'll just replace this stopwatch, I think. Uh, okay. Right. I had a problem with the button on that stopwatch. So, um, I'm going to do my first experiment. So, I'm going to do this with 20 oscillations, and I'm going to time how long it takes. So, I'm just going to pull that down a little bit and release at the same time I press the button on the stopwatch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so I've got a total time of 13.69 seconds. So I can divide that by 20, and that will give me the period of that system. So that's for 500 grams. Now I need to do the same experiment for 450 grams, so I need to remove five of these masses. So that's one, two... Okay, so now we're back to 450 grams. So I'm just going to do exactly the same as I did before. So release and hit the stopwatch at the same time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, 12.91 seconds. And just keep going. Another five off. One, two, three, four, five. I'll stop watching again. And off we go again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12.12. Five off again. One, two. Three. Four. And five. Reset and go again. One, two. 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 11.34. Okay, another five off. Two, three, four, five. And off we go again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Ten point five. So you see now how it's becoming much more unstable with the lighter weights. This is why 20 oscillations is probably about as, as high as we can go. Uh, right, another five off. One, two, three, four, five. Reset and let's go again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Nine point seven eight. And then the last one, which is two hundred grams. So one, two. Let's go last time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Eight point seven two. Okay, so we've got all these times for twenty oscillations. So I can divide this number by twenty, and that gives me the actual period um, for for each mass that I can then put into my my table here. I can then calculate the theoretical period by doing what the masses are uh, and by using the spring constant that I calculated in the earlier example. And that allows me to then draw graphs and we can look at the, uh, the, the, the uh, relationship between our calculated periods and what we actually measured during the experiment on the graph there. And that allows us to comment on the accuracy of our results. So once again, we need to be careful to be aware of errors that we have in the system. Uh, make sure we've catered for those by careful selection of timing methods, what, what technologies could we use to actually improve our errors here that we can put into, uh, into our report. Um, so yeah, be aware of those. What we're not looking for is overall accuracy of your data, we're just being aware of where potential errors in that data 